Good day, everybody! I am Naisha J. Nomokitan, the presenter of Group 1. I hope you'll find this topic informative and interesting. The topic of our presentation on this morning is about the oxidative system. Our body has three main methods for using energy to sustain itself and fuel exercise. These physiological pathways are called energy systems, which are the following. Number one, phosphagen system, also known as ATP, PCR system. Number two, glycolysis system. And three, oxidative system, which is the primary source of ATP at rest and during low intensity exercise. But in today's discussion, we will give spotlight to what is the oxidative system. Moving on, what is oxidative system? Unlike the phosphagen and glycolytic system, the oxidative system is aerobic and uses oxygen to help with energy production, while the glycolytic system uses carbohydrate to generate energy. The oxidative system dips into the other macronutrient as well, which we call fat and protein. The system, which are primary source of ATP and use predominantly in longer duration, lower intensity activity. The fat and carbs provide a fuel and because these substances are stored in abundance to our body, the oxidative system can produce energy all but indefinitely. The oxidative system is heavily engaged in low to moderate intensity activities. You'll harness a lot of energy via the oxidative system for your longer training sessions, including distance running. You'll also rely on the oxidative systems to fuel you through the length of any obstacle race, from a 5k to a 12 miler. Now, let's move to the next topic. How does oxidative system work? There are three processes or stages which produce ATP. Each stage involves several complex chemical reactions, which is why aerobic ATP production is lower than the other two energy systems. When it comes to energy, the more complex the process, the longer it takes to produce ATP. So, the three stages which produce ATP, number one, aerobic glycolysis, also known as slow glycolysis. Number two, Krebs cycle. Number three, electron transport chain. Each stage is responsible for producing a different number of ATPs. The glycolysis has two ATP. The Krebs cycle has two ATP. The electron transport chains has 34 ATP with a total of 38 ATPs. Now, let's talk about the first stage. Aerobic or slow glycolysis. Aerobic glycolysis involves the same series of reaction as the glycolytic system, commonly referred to as fast glycolysis. The main difference is that slow glycolysis occurs in the presence of oxygen. The end product of the breakdown of glucose is a substance called pyruvate. Without oxygen, pyruvate is converted into lactic acid, which can result in muscle pain, cramps, and muscular fatigue. The second one is Krebs cycle. So the Krebs cycle is a series of close to a dozen chemical reactions that continues the oxidation of glucose that began with aerobic glycolysis. Fatty acid from fats and small amount less than 5% of amino acid from proteins are converted into more acetyl coenzyme A. Along with acetyl coenzyme A, fatty acid and amino acid enter the Krebs cycle and are broken down. This results in the production of ATP and carbon dioxide which is exhaled. Hydrogen is also produced which is transferred to the electron transport chain the next stage. Last one is the electron transport chain. The hydrogen produced in the curb cycle and during slow glycolysis result in increased acidity within the working muscles. If acidity is allowed to get too high, all energy reaction will grind to a halt. To prevent this, hydrogen combines with the enzymes not in fat and is sent to the electron transport chain where it combines with oxygen to form water, lowering acidity in the process. The water is then exhaled along with the carbon dioxide. 
How to train the oxidative system? Training the oxidative system involves working in the aerobic heart rate training zone of 60 to 80 percent of your maximum. To develop all aspects of the oxidative system, one should use a mixture of training methods and modalities. Good choices include number one, steady state cardio, which means long duration. Low intensity workouts such as jogging, cycling, swimming, or rowing. Works out should last 30 minutes or more, up to 60 minutes. Your pace should be comfortable and you should be able to maintain a conversation as you exercise. Number two, long intervals. Using a one over one or one two work rest interval, like for example, three minutes fast running, three minutes walking, jogging, repeated five times to total 30 minutes. Number three, the fart leg. The fart leg session involves unstructured interval training with periods of increased intensity followed by periods of easier recovery. For example, running cycling where you pick up the pace on the heels and then slow down for 90 seconds after each effort. Interval length and intensity should be mixed and random to train a variety of levels of aerobic fitness. Let me conclude this presentation. So, that's why it is important to train in all energy system. Train long, slow distance can help us build an aerobic base and help us strengthen this oxidative system by increasing our VO2 max, which is our ability to utilize the oxygen we take in. By interval training, this could help us to recover by increasing our body's ability to decrease blood lactate levels as well as making us more proficient and replenishing our oxygen depth. That's the end of our presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much.